All right, Andrew, thank you very much. Well, for many Americans, email accounts are the filing cabinets of the digital age where people keep important documents, and many store their photographs and other precious memories on social media. But here's the question. What happens to these accounts when the owners pass away? There's a movement to pass state laws which would grant families access to their loved ones' online accounts, but some, some tech companies and privacy advocates are resisting those efforts. Naomi Khan is the uh, Harold H. Green Professor of Law at the George Washington University Law School, and she joins us from Washington, D.C. Naomi, welcome to Arise America. I appreciate this. Thanks. Great to be here. You know, I guess I just want to ask the question, first of all, what, what is the policy now? If someone passes away, what happens to all their information on their social media accounts? Well, it depends on the the individual internet service providers. So Facebook has one policy, Yahoo has another policy, your bank may have a completely different policy. So it completely depends, it varies, whatever, whatever they say in their terms of service is what happens. A few states have started to pass laws, but it's under 10 states in which there are laws on what to do. And so what's your opinion? What, what then should the law be? What should the standard be? Well, the law should be that when you, when you, the account holder, say, I want this person to have access to my bank accounts or to my emails when I die, the law should say, okay, that person has access. If a court says, all right, we need to appoint someone to take care of all of your online accounts, then the person appointed by the court should have access to all of those online accounts, regardless of what the, regardless of what that click-through agreement actually says. So in very practical terms, what would this law, I believe it's called the Uniform Fiduciary Access to Digital Assets Act, try to say that 10 times over and over, but in very <laughs> practical terms, what would it do? What it would do is it would say, okay, if the court appoints someone to manage your estate when you're dead, if a court appoints someone to manage what's going on in your life because you're incapacitated, then that person will be able to access your online accounts unless you have opted out of that system. It also says that if you decide, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to write a document, I'm going to create a power of attorney, and I'm going to give my agent the right to access these accounts, the law would say, okay, your agent has the same rights that you would, and if you say, I'm going to set up a trust to manage everything, then the person managing the trust would also have the same rights that you have. So without having this access, uh, access then, what, what's the harm? What's the downside for family members not being able to access these accounts? The downside for not being able to access them is, first of all, this is, this is a shocking figure to most people. There are about 2 million cases each year of identity fraud just for people who have died. Hmm. So if you can't shut down someone's account, then that person is a prime candidate for some kind of identity fraud. The second, so that, that's one huge issue. The second issue is we live so much of our lives online now. As you said, online digital assets, our computers are our filing cabinets. And can you imagine if the person trying to distribute whatever property you have, that person doesn't have access to what's in that filing cabinet. It's very hard to figure out what your bank accounts are. It's very hard to figure out what your debts are. It's very hard to figure out if you have any valuable assets online. And, gee, what happens to all of those great photographs that you've stored in your online accounts? You know, there are those who are a critic of this um, effort and this movement who would say that this is that person's personal information. They didn't want people to have access to it when they were alive, and that uh, desire should be respected in, in their death. Uh, what's your response to that point of view? I think people's privacy is incredibly important, and that's why... That's why granting access only to people whom the individual trusts or whom a court has appointed is an important part of thinking through how to protect privacy. Also, when a court appoints someone to manage someone's online accounts, that person that person has legally defined duties and 
it's fraud for that person to do something outside of those legally defined duties. So the law already sets up protections to make sure that the person managing those online accounts is doing that in the best interests of the account holder. Naomi Khan, thank you so much for that explainer. I do appreciate it. Nice to talk to you. Thanks very much.